This is the first time in a long time I feel nervous right now. I feel like really nervous for some reason. Need a minute? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, All right. Hold. Hold. Roll. Cut, 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 cut. Whenever I get emotional, Jay's <laughs> just sitting there, just like they're there. <laughs> <laughs> take a breath, buddy. I'm good. Unsolved Supernatural season seven, Sally House story, take one, and Ooh. common mark. Hey there, demons. It's me, your boy. There's definitely a force at play there, though. And what is that? Gravity. Timmy, I'm very scared, but if you could throw this ball back, I won't be as scared. Oh my god, that's the biggest lie I've ever heard. Turn it on. Please don't turn it on. Please don't. Ah! You've outdumbed yourself. Holy water inside here. I assumed it was church. holy water. All right, Annabelle. It's you and me now, and there's no hiding. Just you and the Shanester. What I gathered from reading about her was basically just respect her. I will say, I do not respect you. <laughs> Tell us your name. Apple tater? <laughs> I think we're ready to rock and roll, baby. You look like an idiot. As you know, I'll only do one demonic investigation per season, but seeing as how this is the last season, I figured why not end this series with the demon I started it with. And I'm not referring to you, by the way. Oh. I'm referring to, to Sally House. This week on the series finale of BuzzFeed Unsolved Supernatural, we investigate the one place I vowed I would never return as part of our ongoing investigation into the question, are ghosts real? My name is Ryan Bergara. I am uh, the creator of this show, and I'm the host of this show. I'm its papa, and its mama. No, I guess Shane would be its mama. My name is Shane Madej. I'm a co-host of BuzzFeed Unsolved. It feels very good to be on the last season. I would say that a return to the Sally House at this particular point in time very much feels like a benchmark. Going to the Sally House with a behind the scenes crew, it's really crazy to think that's where we are now and that we're given the opportunity to really close this thing out right because it's truly a bookend of where we started and where we are now. I think the show is special where it works because there is something for everybody in the show. So if you're not a fan of horror, but you love comedy, or if you're a fan of comedy and you don't like horror, this kind of bridges the gap between those two interests. It also does the same for skeptics and believers. Like we are diametrically opposed when it comes to ghosts and anything paranormal. We're able to express that in a way where it's still clear that we not only like each other, but we respect each other still. And I think that is mirrored in the audience as well. Let's try it one more time. We can play out some more banter if there's more to play out, but okay. you know. Sounds good. Take a ghost home with us and trap it in your little rib cage. I'm happy to. I'll try to put Annabelle Well, in I me. thought this was going to be a harder pitch. I thought you were going to be no, like, no, I'll no, take you that. But if you're like, hey, come inside me. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to say that. <laughs> Not exactly where I was hoping that, that would go. Would go. <laughs> Katie LeBlanc, I think she might care a little more than I do, which I've been told I care a little too much, which has been detrimental to my health physically and mentally. <laughs> this show has been a team effort from the beginning and it feels weird for it to be just me and him saying goodbye. I think it would be nice if we had the people who were in the trenches with us making this be able to also say goodbye. Us and our strange sect of ninjas would love to thank all of you guys for supporting <laughs> Unsolved for as long as you have. I guess we'll see you next time. It's been great, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. That's a wrap on the Unsolved set. Picture wrap, officially. Yes. Oh my oh god. god. Oh Jesus Christ, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. Oh no. <laughs> oh god, okay. This show isn't 
just you know me sitting behind a computer and then you know it comes out on YouTube. It's like an entire army of people. They're just as much a part of the show's success as Shane and I are. What do you need me to, to help you tear down? If, uh, do you need me to help you tear down? Yeah, just the lights, of, even if you could like lower the ones the in the back. Yep. Hot cards, hot cards. Hot cards, coming in hot. Let yeah. me know if Mark. you end up needing any dividers for the second pelican. Uh, I, I will need them. I'm stealing props from the set. Don't tell anybody. If somebody doesn't take this, this will go in the trash. I know, this is the map that's on the desk. I'm gonna frame it. It's the last day on set here. I actually remember when they ha we had meetings to make a set. The fact that we were having even a set design meeting was like crazy to me. Um, and I remember seeing like the initial designs of this office. I actually think Shane was with me when we saw it for the first time. And we were, I mean, truly blown away by how much detail Lena had put into this. We do have a lot of work to do right now. We weren't kind of tackled by our emotions in this moment. But I imagine after the Sally House, that's gonna be a different story. You might even see Shane, um, his eyes well up. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see, you might see some emotion from the big guy. It is odd to know that when I walk out of the door, it's not gonna be here. And I think that'll take a couple days for that to set in. Maybe it'll happen in the middle of the road and I'll just start weeping in my hotel room. I don't know. Ryan, interview, take one, Unsolved Dog. I'm Matt, and I'm making this documentary. Can you tell me about the creation of Unsolved? What is it born from? It came from a more organic place than people might think because I used to commute to work with Brent Bennett, who was the original co-host of Unsolved. And we would have arguments about true crime cases and ghosts and demons and stuff like that all the time in the car. I know that sounds like it's made up and it's a weird thing to talk about in a work commute, but for whatever reason, that topic came up quite a bit. So we would argue about that. From those conversations, I kind of realized that nobody was exploring those two topics. And so so I decided it would be fun if we uh, covered a true crime case. We just recorded ourselves talking about it. I would tell Brent the story and then he would react and see how that format would work. The first topic was the Somerton Man, which was that random mystery man that was found on the beach in Australia. And that was that. And then my boss at the time liked the format. The suggestion came to maybe we should put ourselves on video as well and actually go to a place where I guess a true crime case occurred. And so we went to uh, the Elisa Lamb spot in uh, downtown, the Stay on Bain, which it's called now. It used to be called the Cecil Hotel. I joined for the Illuminati episode when Brent, um, rest in peace. Ryan, why Shane? <laughs> <laughs> Brent told me he didn't want to do it anymore. I was on the roof. I remember this. I walked downstairs. You were on like, the roof staring out at the skyline alone as you often did. And then I walked downstairs and I was like, well, I got to find a new co-host. Sat down and Shane was just sitting there and I was like, hey man, can I talk to you for a second? I was already going into like, here's what you need to do before he even said yes. He was like, oh yeah, sure, that sounds good. We did a, a series called Test Friends together and we were already friends before Unsolved because of that series. And we had sat next or around e each other for a long time even back to when we were interns. I already knew we had like a natural like report. So he just was like the natural next person to ask. Was there ever concern about the duo not working? <laughs> no. I had some strong confidence going into it that it was gonna just work. I guess there was like a little part of me thinking that like, oh man, I hope they don't start, you know, blasting Shane in the comments or something. That didn't really happen. I do have to say a lot of comments were like, as if nothing had happened. I don't know if people even realized it was a different white guy. Well, I, I guess I was, I have a, there's probably a pretty, chunky middle to the Venn diagram that is me and Brent. Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think you're a little bit more of a dick than he is, but that's you know. That's true. I think in that, different ways I though. think that works. Actually, no, that, that's true. Brent does have his, his, his ability. He's a dick well. too. Yeah, but... I, we're just three dicks. <laughs> yeah. Matt and I are gonna ride together to the airport. It's gonna be real fun. It's gonna be Once very long. Here. TJ Marchbank, absolute unit. He's just a, an enormous safety blanket for the shoot and also still cares about the creative because a lot of times first ADs, they're very much on the logistics of a shoot. Not always do they care about the vision of the project, but TJ actually cares. We carry a lot of stuff and we just pack this bag as much as we can because you never know what we would need. I would say the trickiest part about shooting Unsolved is probably keeping the gear like working. Can you let me know how many batteries we need as well? We definitely need more double A's if this is all we got. Or maybe not. It's only one investigation. You good on sound? Is that enough for you? 60.32? Yeah, I mean, usually I have I have a couple 16s, but that's 
that's fine with me if that's what we want to do. It's one episode. Yeah, exactly. One goes in the main sound and one goes in the EVP, so that's fine. These are plenty big. This is all we have with us. We don't have anybody who can bring us gear, so we always want to make sure that we have everything, everything works. Also, because imagine if a freaking ghost shows up and our equipment's not working. That's just the worst. I mean, that is the whole point of the show. <laughs> Regardless if you believe or not, we want to make sure our gear is working if and when something actually crosses frame. He made it! I did make it. How does the first trip contrast with the second trip? I mean, this time we're seasoned pros. Because when we went there the first time, I was a little nervous. We were scared children. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know. We didn't have any gadgets and gizmos. No, it's I also say. like it's a spooky Or gizmos and, wait. Gasmos and, gasmos and gizmos. Gasmos and gizmos and gadgets. I'm not excited. I actually lost sleep over it last night, so uh, I can only imagine what it's going to be like when I'm there. Five years ago. Let's be careful, everyone. There are other people on this train. This time, going back with actual equipment and a crew. We got the my, gear this time. It really felt like we were going to give it a proper ghost hunt. Yeah, we had a plan. We were standing in this spot five years ago, and being back here is already stressing me out. Let's get it over with. You're not excited to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sally? Well, we already did it. We whooped her ass. And now she wants revenge. We'll see. Back in Kansas. You're back, baby. Back in Kansas. I had a big coffee this morning, so I'm real revved up. Last time I was here was, in fact, uh, to go to the Sally house. I'm excited to get another crack at it. Going back to the Sally house, back to the birthplace of uh, the internet and BuzzFeed's bastard child, which is this show. Here we go. You're out of your mind. Rock and roll, buckaroo. At this point, by the way, the company BuzzFeed does not really know what to do with this show. It's done pretty well. You know, it's it's a series now. People recognize it as a series, which was huge. But from there, they didn't really know what to do with it because it wasn't pulling in like mega, mega numbers at that point, but it was doing well. So it's like they couldn't say no to making more, but they didn't know how to like utilize it from a business standpoint. Everyone would say that this is the most evidence you've ever had on film. Some would say that. I would argue that we've had greater pieces of evidence in other places. But I will say that this is, it's either the most scared I've ever been in my life or tied for the most scared I've ever been in my life. My concept of reality was breaking when I was at this place last time. I definitely will be less afraid, I think. I'm gonna assume that she recognizes me even though I have a beard now. She'll clock you, yeah. She'll, she will, I hope she does. And then she'll pop up on camera and then we'll wrap this up nicely in a, a nice little ghost hunting I'd boat. love it. I'd love nothing more. We weren't really sure, like I said, and they were also thinking of selling the entire franchise to TV. The idea was, yes, they were gonna have me help pitch the series, but I was never guaranteed that I would be in it or hosting it still. In fact, I was pretty sure that if it went to TV, I would have been recast or something like that. And so what happened was they decided they didn't want to throw the IP away and they wanted to try and make it work on BuzzFeed, but they didn't know how that would work because to that point there was no business model built around series. They fired up this idea of a full length 40 something minute episode of Unsolved. It was made very clear to me through discussion that if this shoot didn't work out, if this episode did not work, then the series would no longer continue essentially. So I, I had those stakes riding on my shoulders going into this 45 minute episode where we were traveling and hunting ghosts for the first time and I was just gonna learn how to do it on the fly. That was very stressful, but I'm glad it worked out. The fact that we are back here is really cool. It's kind of a benchmark, you know, a, definitely a comparison to where we were then and now even in our personal lives. Last schedule. Lizzie! Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Glad everyone's making a mock. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Devin just got one too. I didn't know that. That's amazing. I didn't even see it. A lot goes into making an episode of Unsolved. Surprisingly, a lot more is in the runway than the actual shoot itself. So the way that we make true crime and supernatural is similar, but also kind of different and veer off in a way. And mostly it's research because true crime is far more research heavy than Supernatural is. Also, Supernatural involves travel and locations. When I'm planning out the season, trying to figure out what places we're actually gonna visit or what cases we're gonna cover, there are a couple of things that I'm usually looking for. Like, is this place gonna be visually interesting? Is there enough of a story here to support an entire episode? Then everybody comes to the brainstorm. And we all kind of just talk over what ideas would, would be good for this season. So let's actually say 10, 15, in case you might need a little extra. I doubt we're going to, but you know, better safe than sorry. 
a lot of the time there's a lot of places that just don't want to be associated with ghosts at all. It's mostly places that already have like an established lore and story about them. And then I'll like just give them a call or an email. And then from there, it's kind of just like talking to the people at the location and seeing if it's like interesting enough to make an episode. Well, then do we just want to do a full hour for the nursery in Probably. general? And like if yeah. we come in at 45 minutes, we're we're great. We're that golden. Good. All right. Um, we have take pictures of the bear. Yeah. Right. Are one of you sleeping in the bedroom tonight? Yeah, I think probably one of us will be in the nursery and one of us will be in the living room. Got it. Research plays a huge part in this show. They provide all the information to be able to write the script. We choose the episodes and in the past I would write then a script based off of that research. But as time went on, we brought on a, a writer who wrote for a lot of the seasons named Garrett Warner. He wrote a lot of the scripts based off research and then I would give notes on his script and we would fine tune it from there. This most recent season, Liza Palmer wrote the scripts and she did a great job. And then we go to location. Let me film you filming me. Oh gosh. Film you filming me filming you yes, filming me. Yes, yes. Inception, baby. <laughs> it was definitely bizarre to go back to Kansas and finish this out at the place we started it at. I was just kind of awestruck at the fact that we're here to close out the series that I didn't think was possible the last time I was looking at these fields. We're missing an entire case of cards that when we patched the gear, I noticed and I said, we have this case, but we should have another case. I can call Walmart and see if they have them. Devin and most recently in this last season, Lizzie have been a very integral part of the team that we couldn't do the show without. Matt luckily had a bunch for his GoPro that he's not oh, actually using. Amazing. So this should be, this should be able to be enough to get us through. Are you good? I mean, yeah, I don't either. Okay. The other tricky part about shooting the show is that the location is never exactly how we think it's going to be because we don't get a scout. We don't get to go and see these places ahead of time before we schedule the shoot. The day that we shoot is the first day that we're at the location. Mark, Matt, and I are going to head in to do B-roll. We're going to start in the basement. After Copy. we're done, you can come in and set up the static. We're going to go right to the nursery. After we're done, you can come in and set up the static. Copy. Will you just text me when you're yep, out of there? Yep, I will. So Lizzie, I was in there the and I was filming Katie and Mark, the and there was a whisper that said, am I allowed to be here? And it was a man. Yeah. My role in Unsolved was as a producer, and mostly I just kept people on budget, on time, and safe. I did a lot of coordinating with the locations and like talking to the location owners on set. This is why you're indispensable on these things, I because think, you have the vision. I did right. not like that. I was not thrilled. I was no, like, you're never thrilled I was it. like, Mark? Mark? <laughs> is that you? Her presence, I think, is important because her, more so than Ryan, seems to be attuned to some sort of spiritual realm. I don't know if her mother was struck by lightning when she was pregnant or what. A lot of times we'll go to places and she'll sort of just be like, I don't like this. I'm picking up on some vibes here. Devin's been there for a very long time. She's been on the show much longer than me and knows the show intimately in, in ways almost nobody else does and how it works. A chair. Most of the crew doesn't believe in ghosts, and I typically can walk into a place and be like, the energy in here is weird. What if a ton of stuff happens tonight, even if it's not explainable? It would be great. Is there part of you that thinks he doesn't believe as much? When it comes down to it, I think he does believe as much as he did at the beginning. Possibly more, because he does believe that he's caught, you know, good stuff on film. Would that change, I mean, it's not going to change you at all? Or? Yeah, here's the thing is like the basis of all that there's no correlation it is pseudoscience like by definition i think that's another part is the show introduces nuance to it like not every speck of dust you see is an orb i don't want to watch a show that's just a skeptic being like you know what's not real all this i'd be like this is fucking boring i, I want to watch a show where he gets big old saucer plate eyes and looks like he's gonna poop himself and I get to chuckle about it. That's funny, I thought you wouldn't That's... fall asleep to some skeptic, like Skeptics Weekly. It would Weekly. be so boring. Sally's just in there licking her chops. Oh, like... she's just waiting, she's looking yeah. out the window like, oh, I yeah. wait. Oh, they're back, the boys are back. Five years I've waited. <laughs> How do you think you as a duo have changed since that? I mean, we certainly understand each other more. We understand each other's tendencies. I think we became friends in the first place because we just clicked so well together. Yeah. We have a lot of the same interests. 
on just about everything except our belief in the paranormal. We're pretty simpatico. All of a sudden we get into two chairs just pushing behind our, our butts. We just sit down. <laughs> like, oh. I have so much to tell you guys that we got so much to catch up on. I would love it if we walked in and just became the haunted man. <laughs> yeah, she's just like, oh my God, so much has happened over these past five years. You guys look different. It no, makes it I'm... easier for them to compare us then versus now too. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're really wearing the same thing. They could see it like, still hunky? Hunkier? Less hunky? Still, still hey, ghoul, ghoul boys, still sexy. The ghoul hunks. <laughs> Can you talk about the Bugaras and the Shaniacs? A Bugara is somebody who is open to the existence of ghosts or anything in the paranormal, like aliens, cryptids, things like that. I think ghoul atheists would be a Shaniac. Yes. Would you consider yourself a Shaniac or a Bugara? I mean, you know, Shaniac. I don't think I'm either a Shaniac or a Bugara. I am more open to being like, that's not a ghost or an explanation. Probably leaning more towards Bugara. I'm a Tej. I want to be a Bugara, but I think inherently I'm more of a Shaniac. Every time I've shot very spooky things happening, I've felt nothing. I want there to be ghosts so that we have a good show. And that's what, I, that's what I'm worried about. I'm like, I want to scare the shit out of Ryan because that is good for content. I think the two opposing parties have made Unsolved what it is because despite having a different belief system, they still get along and respect each other. There's a fun, friendly back and forth and banter that kind of mirrors what we have in the show. Yeah, it's like Batman and Joker. You know? oh, I was gonna say this is like, I'm Batman, you're like Joker. I guess we're both kind of like the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're both Joker I guess. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Let's go catch a yeah. demon. You generally feel like you, you, you know how something's gonna be when you go to a place and you have expectations built out for what the experience is gonna be like. But actually going boots on the ground there, it was weird. It was really weird because it was a battle. It was a battle to try and treat this like any other episode and that, you know, we got a job to do, but also acknowledge that it isn't just any other episode. This is the end. <laughs> we got crazy Ryan already. He's spooked, you can tell. It's fun to get paid to go to a building that is supposed to be haunted and walk around with cameras and be like, are there ghosts here? Like, I don't know. It's a good time. It's grueling and tiring, but I don't think any of us would do it if it weren't a real hoot. Cut. Feeling it? Oh man, this is so surreal. Isn't it weird? I think the trickiest thing about filming in those places, honestly, is the conditions that you're in. You're also like completely filming this in the dark. Can you film yourself on Osmo? Yeah. Okay, then cover Ryan and film yourself on Osmo. All right, let's do it. Here we go. All right, Unsolved Supernatural Sally House Nursery, take one and common mark. I do a lot of camera work. So if the episode looks good, it's probably me. If I were the cameraman for Unsolved, I would be whining. I see the sweat forming on his shirt when we shoot and it'll just be at the end of a shoot, he'll be like, oh, that was a rough one. Like, <laughs> he just keeps it all in. He just keeps his head down and, and trucks through. Man, Mark Celestino. He's definitely the best camera operator I've ever worked with. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, you, you know that's true. Come on. No, man. yeah, for sure, for sure. Mark is a much, 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 much better cameraman than I am. I was not the best AD, but I filled in for Mark and TJ when necessary. Started out on some of the studio stuff and then traveled with them on a number of occasions. With this show, just the nature of the show and how fast it moves when we're at these places, you need to have a certain eye of being able to catch a shot really quick and also be able to move quickly in case something happens. And Mark has this skill like nobody I've ever seen. I want yeah. to get going on this room in the next five to 10 minutes. Okay. And for a long time, TJ and I were often working in each other's stead. If he wasn't available, I would hop in and do his job. So it, it wasn't often that we shot together, but when we did, sparks flew, baby. Love this plan, love this show, love this crew. What a nice love TJ's being. Do you remember Shane and I? Shane and Ryan? Can you say our names if you remember us? I'm gonna ask you again, how old are you, Sally? Do you think there's any part of that nature coming from a frustration in not capturing something? I don't know that he's ever frustrated by not capturing something. He's always been very upfront about locations we've been to where he's like, I didn't think that place was haunted. I think he wants to get good evidence. 
desperately. All right, you have three minutes left to show yourself. To show us you're here. But, uh, Whatever. I mean, to be fair, a lot of places we go to, we do kind of start quiet, oftentimes. It'll start with the serious questions, and then sort of devolve as things go on. Have some fucking respect! Are you born in a barn? You're talking to Ryan Bergara, you piece of shit! Yeah, that's right! We're gonna lock your ass in the basement! And I want him not wanted anymore. <laughs> this room is clear! Well, let's cut. Alright, let's cut. Everyone's beating? Is everyone paying attention? I'm rolling. Thank you. Unsolved Supernatural Sally House Living Room, take one. <laughs> We're rolling the I, I, I got it in time. <laughs> My god, you, so when you said you're rolling, <laughs> I'm you literally literally rolling, 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 literally rolling. Literally rolling nothing. I feel like the crew itself really makes Unsolved kind of a special project just because we all genuinely like enjoy each other. Everyone involved has been really really on top of it. I love everybody on the Unsolved crew so much. I don't know what it is with the crew. Unsolved is strange because you do arrive in a place and then you can't shoot till the next night. So everyone gets to sleep in or you spend the day, you go get lunch, you walk around town a bit. Maybe that bonds people? It's not a particularly fun show to shoot because the hours are late. Being as tight as it is, is a testament to just how well everybody gets along. People should know that none of us do this for the money. We all do this because we really like the show, we really like each other. And I think we all feel a sense of pride when it goes up, and I think we all enjoy actually watching the episodes that we make. I've shot a lot of things on a lot of different shows, and never have I met a crew that is this close. And I think that closeness comes from nature of traveling together a lot and going to all these different places and having these different experiences. But also when you're up until 3 a.m. in a really, really dark room, sometimes it's freezing cold, you kind of create a bond. Oh man, this is really bringing back a, a fucking flashback. This, this, this is crazy. This is freaky. This is, especially because I was sitting down right here. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. All right. Um, Let's get going. All right, Sally. This is it. This is your moment. This, this is what you love to do. This is your bread and butter. It's a two-way street. I could ask and push and hope that they come back to shoot with Shane and I as much as I want, but they still have to say yes. And so I've never taken that for granted, that it's a tough shoot and yet these people still are coming back. That makes me feel good because it makes me feel like, okay, at least I know I'm not a total prick or something. <laughs> like, cause they wouldn't do that if I was like a total asshole. So like I could take solace in that little part right there. But I'm just very thankful that people have been willing to ride out this crazy storm for as long as we have. We could probably yes. sign okay. this, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 it's yeah. a guest book. You are a guest in this spooky home. Seeing people writing about us in the guest book at the Sally House really kind of crystallizes that perspective. You know, people actually watch this show. I think a lot of times when you're creating something, you get so caught up wanting to make it as good as it could possibly be that you forget the what the show can mean to people. Moments like the Sally House where you see it like in writing and you see people that have come from other parts of the world to visit there because they saw you there, that makes it a little bit easier to take in where you're like, oh wow, there is a one-to-one -one connection I've had with somebody. We had fun, you know? Pals walking around spooky houses. It's a dream come true. Here, I want, I want you to react to this. Yeah. This is still from the first pilot. Yes, yeah, I was talking to Father Thomas. You're talking to Father Thomas. This is before you went to the Sally house. What's the difference between the two people? I exited this house last time under very rare, excruciating circumstances. So we'll see if those could be replicated tonight. I hope not, honestly. I just see a very young person, very ambitious but doesn't really know what to do about that ambition, so he's just kind of throwing shit at the wall. The waiting, that's the worst part. Yeah. Are you scared of Everything. I will say, for as much as I push you and as much as I torture you, when Mark and I are in those places alone, I don't love it. I feel very normal when we're shooting, and then when I get tossed in these places alone, I now have to basically lay in the bed that I made. Is that even over? No, that's the Shane card. There you are, Shane, that's yours. Can we just have a group photo? Yeah, we should definitely get a group photo tomorrow morning. Aww. There it is. Outside of Sally House. Okay. FYI. All right, everybody outside. Be there at 6.50 and then Bye. whoever Bye. is See in you later. five minutes to be late. All right, we're leaving them in the house. Bye, guys. All right.
right, Unsolved Supernatural Sally House Exit. And take one, common mark. Ah. Uh, a weight's been lifted. Yeah. At this point now, anything we would use, we would use either underneath the monologue or if you want to, if you do want to say anything, this is the time and this is it. Can we get McDonald's? <laughs> I guess that kind of makes sense to take in the series when you are just completely sleep deprived and exhausted. Yeah. I am glad that you all came out here to see the end of this. You have any, any last thoughts here as we put the series out to sea? You know, one heck of a ride. We did it, we did it, yeah. we did it. Yeah. Adios, Sally, for good this time. Okay. Suck my balls. <laughs> it means everything to be able to say goodbye. That was part of the reason of just this whole last season even happening. In transparency, we, this, this season wasn't supposed to really happen. It was supposed to be the end, kinda, last season. There just was no way that I, Shane, or anybody who works in the show was gonna say no to the opportunity to say goodbye. That was like one of the major things that I wanted to have in place if we were gonna do another season because I don't think it's very often that a show that people enjoy is able to really say goodbye. We also very much care about this content and we care that you care. And this is our way of saying thank you. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> this whole last season to me felt like a giant thank you card and feel like I closed things on good terms and to look towards the future. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, last night I had the thought of like, oh, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna have to wrap out this series and I'm not sure what I'm gonna say. So I'm gonna keep it short and simple. You guys have been incredible. It's been a, an honor and a pleasure to be part of this show. And with that, I say, ladies and gentlemen, that is a series wrap on BuzzFeed Unsolved. Congratulations. I never would have imagined being where I'm at right now. When I first started this show, I really didn't think it was gonna be anything. I didn't think anyone was gonna watch it. There's still a part of me that very much feels like that scared 25 year old kid that just doesn't know what the rest of his life is gonna look like. And this show gave me a bit of a roadmap. I know obviously there's so much more life to live and you don't know what's gonna happen, but I have a better idea. And I think that's because of this show. Because I think when you're like in this business, and especially if you're a young person, it's really tough to not know what's coming next. So the fact that it's ending now and setting me up for what's coming next is, um, it's crazy. What does Unsolved mean to you? It's changed my life. It's meant a different path for me. It gave us the opportunity to create stuff that we were also passionate about. Unsolved to me, first and foremost, means friendships. The relationships I created with this show are incredible. Even though like we'll all go off and already going off and doing our own things, the friendships are still there. We're still gonna be hanging out and getting beers and whatever. Being there for the last episode was like a really great experience and not one that I thought I would be able to do. The show itself has meant a lot to me, both like personally and professionally. Main goal of mine when I like decided that I wanted to do entertainment or make content was like, I just wanted to make content that like made people happy and I feel like we did that and I'm just like happy that I got to be a part of that and that makes me feel like really fulfilled. Unsolved holds a really special place in my heart because a lot of the times I get hired on things and it becomes a job and it becomes something that I do for the check and that was never ever the case with Unsolved. It was an exciting opportunity even if they didn't pay me I would have done it. Everybody cares about the show. Everybody's passionate about it. You don't often get to work with crews like this. Being able to say goodbye to it or being able to celebrate it, it it's goodbye with a documentary it is just a really wonderful gift. I've always made stuff about stuff that we are genuinely very curious about and very passionate about. That curiosity is just a desire to sort of explore, take deep dives. And Unsolved is sort of the physical extension of that. It's fun to explore the unknown. But that's what it's been to me. It is strange to think about how long we have been doing this show. Like when I started this show, I was like a child. I was like 25 years old. And I'm a 30 year old man now. That's five years, that's a long time to spend with anything. It's like one of the longer relationships in my life. Not only with, you know, the crew and the actual content itself, but like with the audience. It's a very personal thing. It's so strange to know that there's like a group of people that are in the room with me 
but also in rooms everywhere around the world that have kind of grown up with me. Like literally people started watching this show when they were in like high school or college and now they're adults and we've kind of just grown together everything I'm very proud of and I wouldn't have done it any different if I had the chance. There's something about the Unsolved fans, the dedication, the intensity is just on another level. That's everything, right? That's to be able to know that you're able to impact people's lives like that is everything. So thank you. You made me sad. Thanks for that. Mostly anybody could do what we do, but it's dependent upon our wonderful fan base. Also, like when we started doing the postmortems, I think that really showed what a special community it was because I think in the way we interact on the show, Ryan and I obviously have opposing beliefs when it comes to all this, but at the end of the day, we're still buds. Us being able to bridge that gap has informed the fan base and turned it into a very wonderful community. You know, thank you. I don't think you could quite grasp how much of a difference this show has made in my life personally. I know the show must mean a lot to you, whoever's watching this, and that it's been a big part of your life, but I could promise you the effect that you have all had on me has been, if not more, the same that perhaps I've had on you. And I've treasured that relationship and I've been really thankful for the opportunity to, to make content for you and to make this show for you. It's hard for me to kind of grasp that it's ending. Right now in this moment, all I feel is just gratitude and appreciation for everything that you've allowed me to do. Yeah, I mean, this is the best years of my life. Thank you. Truly thank you.